Bard gets better, Runway's Gen 2 is now open to anyone, and OpenAI says it's still not training GPT-5. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in five minutes or less. We kick off today with an update from Google's Bard. In the battle for supremacy when it comes to LLM-powered chatbots, Google has now announced that Bard is using a new technique that they're calling implicit code execution, which runs code in the background detecting computational prompts and improves the accuracy of word and math problems by 30%. In their blog post, they explain... Large language models are like prediction engines. When given a prompt, they generate a response by predicting what words are likely to come next. As a result, they've been extremely capable on language and creative tasks, but weaker in areas like reasoning and math. In order to help solve more complex problems with advanced reasoning and logic capabilities, relying solely on LLM output isn't enough. Our new method allows BARD to generate and execute code to boost its reasoning and math abilities. This approach takes inspiration from a well-studied dichotomy in human intelligence, notably covered in Daniel Kahneman's book, Thinking Fast and Slow. Speaking of Google, their DeepMind division has also published new research in Nature about something that they call AlphaDev, which is an AI system that uses reinforcement learning and has discovered enhanced computer science algorithms. Now, this is the latest in DeepMind's Alpha series of AIs, which includes AlphaGo, which beat the world champion at Go. Originally, these AIs were trained around playing games, but they've now been repurposed for other tasks. DeepMind writes, Rather than refine existing algorithms, AlphaDev started from scratch in a computer's assembly instructions. To train it, we built an assembly game where it's rewarded for sorting data efficiently and wins by finding a correct, faster program. This led, they say, to improved algorithms for sorting, which is obviously fundamental to things like social media algorithms, how information is processed on devices, and more. They also said that AlphaDev found ways to improve hashing, increasing the speed by 30%. Now, speaking of improved algorithms and better LLMs, OpenAI has claimed that it is still not training GPT-5. This is something that Sam Altman said in his testimony before Congress a few weeks ago, and he reinforced it at a conference recently held by the Indian newspaper, The Economic Times. Altman said, We have a lot of work to do before we start that model. We're working on the new ideas that we think we need for it, but we are certainly not close to it to start. Altman also made news on this trip by saying that OpenAI has no plans to go public. The quote that everyone is running with is this one. When we develop superintelligence, we're likely to make some decisions that public market investors would view very strangely. The chance that we have to make a very strange decision someday is non-trivial. My read on this is that when it comes to really important questions, Sam doesn't want a fiduciary responsibility to increase profits at all costs. And while he says he doesn't want to be sued by the public market or Wall Street, that isn't stopping people from suing OpenAI in private right now. A radio host in Georgia is suing OpenAI after ChatGPT told a journalist that he was embezzling funds from a gun rights nonprofit. Gizmodo reports that it's maybe the first of its kind libel lawsuit, alleging that an AI damaged his reputation by making the claims. The DJ's attorney, John Monroe, said, quote, While research and development in AI is a worthwhile endeavor, it is irresponsible to unleash a system on the public knowing that it fabricates information that can cause harm. Speaking of causing harm, a number of senators aren't very happy that Meta's Llama AI model was leaked. Senator Richard Blumenthal, who hosted that hearing that Sam Altman appeared at a couple weeks ago, writes on Twitter, Meta released its advanced AI model Llama with seemingly little consideration and safeguards against misuse, a real risk of fraud, privacy intrusions, and cybercrime. Senator Josh Hawley and I are writing to Meta on the steps being taken to assess and prevent the abuse of Llama and other AI models. Now, one of the things that's interesting about this is that in that memo from a Google AI researcher that got so much attention a couple weeks ago, the researcher claimed that it was in fact the leak of Llama's full model that led to such an explosion of open source development. Given how angry these senators are, it shows the type of challenges the open source community might be in for when it comes to AI regulation. However, if senators Blumenthal and Hawley want to use AI for themselves in the course of their government work, they now might be able to. Microsoft has announced that they're bringing the GPT-4 model to their Azure government cloud computing service, of which it counts as customers a number of U.S. government agencies. Federal customers of Azure include the Defense Department, the Energy Department, and NASA. Later today in Washington, British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak will hold a meeting with President Joe Biden. Among other discussion points, Sunak will invite Biden in the U.S. to participate in a U.K.-hosted global summit on AI safety that is slated for this fall. A spokesperson said that the summit was, quote, for like-minded countries who share the recognition that AI presents significant opportunities, but realize we need to make sure the right guardrails are in place. Now, when that same spokesperson was asked if it was aimed to counter China and Russia, they said, no, it's about looking at technology that is developing extremely quickly, perhaps faster than even those involved in its creation expected. And while they say that that meeting might not be about China, people are definitely taking note of advances in Chinese LLMs. 
Michael Frank shared, for example, a new Chinese LLM model that outperforms ChatGPT 3.5 and Llama's 65 billion parameter model, but which isn't quite at GPT-4's level yet. Finally, we close on a fun one. After weeks of waiting, Runway's Generation 2 text-to-video model is now available for everyone. They've been rolling out access to this in beta for a few weeks, but now they've opened it up to the wider world. If text-to-image allowed everyone to become a photographer or an artist, text-to-video might allow anyone to become a director. Already, we're seeing artists experiment with it. Jared Leto published a video made using Runway with the latest 30 Seconds to Mars song in the background. And Weezer also created a tour promo with the Generation 2 tool. It's highly likely that I do a full video about Gen 2 and text-to-video soon, so keep an eye out for that. But for now, that is it for the AI Breakdown Brief. If you're enjoying, please like, subscribe, and share, and click the notification button so you don't miss an episode. And I'll be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.